Hello and welcome to our presentation on Foglight 5.9 APM. Today we're going to talk about the virtual APM basic configuration. And this is what you need to go ahead and get started, just more of a, a download and go scenario for Foglight to go ahead and get started. So today our appliance configuration, these are our building blocks to the APM solution, is you can have an APM appliance and basically what you're looking to do is run all three architectural components, a Foglight server, a Foglight archiver, and a Foglight sniffer. Now if you take all three and put them on one, this is our APM appliance. If you take two, the Foglight server, the Foglight archiver, this is our FMS and trace repository appliance. Now what happens here is if you do use this one, you need this one together. So you need to make sure you have all three components, the Foglight server, the Foglight archiver, and the Foglight sniffer. Or alternatively what you can do, and this is more production environment, we'll have a Foglight server and then we'll have a Foglight archiver and a Foglight sniffer on, uh, on separate physical appliances. Now there's alternatively uh, in 5.9 we also have a virtual uh, version of this. So basically if you take everything, the Foglight server, the Foglight archiver on one box, on down. The only thing we do not have in the virtual appliance today is the all-in-one solution. So the APM appliance. Now, the basic configuration here, are, you can have an APM appliance on the physical side, so this is everything on one machine, or like we looked at earlier, you need, for the virtual, you need two different virtual appliances, the FMS and Trace Repository virtual appliance and the Trace Collector virtual appliance. Now, what we're going to do today is you can, we're going to look at a basic install of this, the minimal configuration for the virtual setting. And uh, this is going to be on one web server, but I'll, I'll speak a little bit about how we can expand this. So in order to illustrate this a little better, um, I'm going to take you through a diagram. But first, let's talk about the installation steps. So what you need to do first is retrieve four files from the support site. The first one is going to be the virtual APM appliance. And this is the one that's going to contain your Foglight server and your archiver. And then you need a second one, the virtual sniffer appliance, and this is what's going to contain the trace collector. So basically this one is called the APM appliance, but this is actually the, um, the FMS and the trace repository appliance. So it's a little bit confusing, but just make sure you get these two files and then the accompanying install guides, and you'll be able to go ahead and install that basic configuration for the virtual appliances. Now after that, what you'll do is you'll follow the instructions and the quick install guides, and that'll take you through setting up networking. And then at the end, you'll set up the final set of networking. We'll take you through and, and tell you how to connect the Foglight sniffer to the Foglight management server appliance. And then after that, that's it. You start monitoring. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to take you through a detailed um, description of this. And I'm going to take you through and explain what the VM network is, the capture subnet, and then what monitoring is. So we're going to do a little bit of a, a basically a deep dive into the monitoring section of those quick install guides. Now what you'll have is this is um, like a real simple example. So this is an ATG Commerce web server. So this is our target for monitoring. And this has ETH0 that's connected to the VM network. And usually this is the company network. So this is the company network, the internet, Yellow is like your main line coming in to all of the servers in your environment. And then, uh, then what we do is we, we're going to put in a trace collector virtual appliance. And then on a separate hypervisor, I'm going to install the FMS and the trace repository virtual appliance. Okay, so this is your basic network so everybody can connect to your main network. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to connect the monitoring. Now the monitoring will take ETH2, and this is the reason it has to be on the same hypervisor. We're going to take ETH2 and we're going to connect it to the monitoring network for ETH0. So everything that goes to ETH0, we're going to break a copy off and, and also send that over to ETH2. That's basically how network sniffing works. Then the third thing we're going to do so that the trace collector can send all of its information back to the trace repository is we're going to set up a third network that's, that's basically direct connected. And the reason we want to do this is because as we get all of the traffic off the wire, we don't want to send this back over your open network because that would basically be doubling your network traffic. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a wire here on a physical port and we're going to map these two virtual ports together. And we'll have a look at how we do that. 
So in the guide, you'll see the guide will it'll explain each of these networks for you, the VM network, the capture subnet, and monitoring, just like I'm doing here in this diagram. So this diagram will be a good reference for you. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and get started, and I'm going to do an overview demonstration of these different environments. So what I'll do is I'll jump back and forth as we do the wiring. Uh, I'm going to jump back and forth between these. So let's start by having a look at our hypervisors. 10.148.9 and 10.148.11. Okay, so as, as I go to 10.148.9, you'll see ATG. This is our target server. And then the end user sniffer. This is what we're using to connect it, collect the information from the target ATG server. So what you have to do here is you, if I click on the hypervisor, you'll see that I have, and I click on networking, you'll see that I have two different switches, two different physical switches on my hypervisor switch 0 and then switch 1. Now all I do on switch 0 is I have to create I have this monitoring network and the guide will take you through how to set this up but I just want to give you an idea what it's going to look like after it's set up. So if I go to properties on my vSwitch 0 you'll have regular network um, networks on there so the VM network is my my primary one. Now the only difference is watch over here promiscuous mode reject. My management network promiscuous mode is not shown and then my monitoring I have to have promiscuous mode accept so what I can do here is that on the monitoring network if I click on edit and I go to security you have to turn promiscuous mode accept on so that's the only thing you have to do when you create those groups okay so what you'll basically do in the networking guide is I'm going to add networking and you'd be able to connect that it's a virtual machine I'd be able to connect that virtual machine to that same port that I have here, right? So this this physical port, and then once monitoring set up, you can connect it in and set it in promiscuous mode. Now what that lets it do, it lets it see all of the traffic on the VM network. So basically, what's happening here is if we go back to our diagram, uh, we can see that this this connection is done, but this is in promiscuous mode. Okay, that's very important because that's what lets it get a copy of this traffic without getting its own traffic into ETH2. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the other, the other hypervisor. So this is 10.148.11. This is our Fogite APM demo. Now on this one, if we go to networking, the only difference here is you have two. So I still have VM, the, uh, the zero. This is our physical port zero. And this is our physical port one. Now what's happening here is I just need a regular connection to the VM network. All right, and that's it. So basically if I look at my APM demo and I go on edit my settings, you'll see that I have two network adapters. One goes to my VM network, the other one goes to my capture subnet. Okay? Now the capture subnet is basically what we're connecting to on the sniffer. So this one here, the capture subnet, it's the same one. So basically in the install guide, you have those two that are connecting to each other. Now if I connect, look at my sniffer, and I go to edit settings on my sniffer, we'll just take a quick look at the networking on there. So three network adapters are needed. The VM network, this is your general network that all of the web servers are connected to. The capture subnet, this is the one we're going to hardwire so that we can run that over to our archiver. And then we have the monitoring, and this is the one that's set in promiscuous mode. Okay, so this is just to give you a quick peek at how the monitoring works. Now let's go take a final look. Once you get all this set up and you have traffic going into your server, you'll be able to collect it, connect to the 10.148.13. Now the 10.148.13, if you look here, this is our FMS and Trace Repository Virtual Appliance. So this is our server interface. So let's go ahead and connect to that and see what we have. The default username and password are Foglight Foglight. And what you'll have here is an APM directory. Now if I go to APM, a way to set this up is if I go to search and I go to hits, this will show me the hits that are coming in. Now a sure way to tell you that everything's connected, if this is a Java or .NET environment, you'll just be able to go ahead and click on replay. And I go to session explorer. And I could look and I can see one of these sessions. So what I'll do here is I'll, I'll click on an individual hit but we'll go to the pages and this will show you a replay of the pages on the right hand side. The hit inspector will give you a detail on every single trace that you have going through there. 
Now what we'll get in the next demo is uh, you'll be able to go in and see in the configuration, you'll actually work your way up to where you get to a service operations console. And the service operations console is what will group everything together. Thank you for attending.